working with Hecate can be a very transformative journey, both personally and within your witchcraft and magic. She is a powerful goddess to work with, especially as a witch. She is the queen of witches, after all. Today, I am going to show you how to create an altar for Hecate, with suggestions on items to add, divinations to use, Hecate symbols to include, as well as suggested offerings to leave her. We are truly going to honor this pagan goddess. Hello, I'm Rebecca Phoenix, and I'm a magical guide for Simple Mystic Miracles. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you love the goddess of witches and all things pagan and magical, remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel, turn on your post notifications so you always catch new magical content from us. So who is Hecate anyway? Hecate is the queen of witches or the goddess of witches. So she's like the head witch, right? Which is awesome for us to be able to honor her as witches. She is a dark goddess that is associated with the life, death, rebirth cycle. So when I mean dark goddess, what I mean is that she takes us into the underground, the unconsciousness of ourselves into our shadow realm. And she loves us there, she honors, honors us there, and she guides us there. So that's what makes her a dark goddess. And she's really all about that cycle of life, death, and rebirth, which is again why she's also a triple goddess. So Hecate is a triple goddess. So that life, death, rebirth cycle is really important to her and her energy. So as a triple goddess, that's a more modern version of her. She was originally a Greek goddess, and people think that maybe she was possibly associated with a triple goddess because she was always in doorways or at crossroads. So people would put statues of her or images of her in their doorways to protect their homes. And so it would have her facing many different ways. Um, also with more modern uh, paganism and witchcraft, the triple goddess has become very popular, which is that maiden, um, mother and crone, which is that triple goddess, which is what she holds now as well. So goddesses can evolve over time too, which I think is really beautiful and Hecate definitely has. And she's definitely lingered in our consciousness. So Hecate is the goddess of witchcraft, magic, the mysteries, the moon, fertility and birth. So she's about life and death again with fertility and birth. She's also very much associated with the womb area, which is why she's associated with cauldrons and eggs because she's got that womb energy. She very much lives in the depths and in the wombs energetically in, within us, archetypally within us. She's going to live within that womb space. So Hecate symbols include keys, dogs or canines since Dogs and canines are Hecate's support animals. The three hounds are her support animals. Crossroads, like I mentioned, are symbols for her as well as the moon. And obviously her sigil, Hecate's sigil, I love it so much. That would be a symbol for Hecate as well. And also brooms, since she is the queen of witches or the goddess of witches, we have little brooms as her symbols as well. And then like I mentioned before, cauldrons are also a symbol of her as well as the number 13. So 13 is the number associated with Hecate. It is associated with the goddess and good luck. So 13 is her number. And torches are also a symbol for Hecate. Hecate is, is known to have been Persephone's guide through the underworld when Hades came and kidnapped her. She used her torch to light Persephone's way and help her through the dark tunnels of the underworld. So this is why Hecate is a really wonderful guide when you are doing shadow work or journey work. It's part of her archetypal myth to be the one to help guide you through that just like she guided Persephone. Okay, so to set up an altar for Hecate, I'm going to go through what I have here in front of me and give you some suggestions and ideas for what you could add to an altar for Hecate. So obviously you're going to want some kind of representation of her. So I have this beautiful Hecate statue, which I absolutely love. She is my favorite goddess. So I've had this for a while. I always love having her on my altar, but absolutely you want some kind of image of her or a statue to her or something that evokes her energy for you. And then crystals to add to an altar for Hecate would be definitely black obsidian. It's very protective energy. Hecate is a very protective goddess. She's a very loving, protective goddess. So uh, black obsidian is great. So is black tourmaline as well as smoky quartz. And then also 
um, sun moon stone because she is also the goddess of mystery and mystery is just moonstone always feels very mysterious to me this very dark blue moonstone as well as garnet because she's associated with the womb and the menstrual cycle and blood mysteries so garnet would be perfect to honor her on your altar and then obviously we want to light some black candles when we are honoring hecate beautiful wonderful black candles as many as you can get to honor her when you have her on your altar. Black is associated with the divine feminine, and just in general, the divine feminine archetype. And then obviously Hecate is a dark goddess that goes into the underworld and helps you journey through that. So black or dark or darker candles are perfect to honor her. And then of course, adding Hecate symbols to your altar is an amazing way to honor her as well. So I have crystal beads here that look like the moon to me, that represent the moon. Skulls as well, I um, meant to mention, skulls are also um, a symbol of Hecate. So I have my skull here that is a very protective skull for me. So I feel like her energy is also infused in that. And then snakes, I have my snakes here on the altar. Snakes are also um, associated with Hecate, the divine feminine, the Kundalini. Um, so that I have representing here and I also have my little brooms here in front to also honor her as well as my keys I don't know if you can see but because her number is 13 I have one and three keys represented on my altar as the number 13 and then Hecate loves lavender so I have lavender flowers here on her altar as well and then of course I have my cauldron which is also going to act as my incense burner um, when I'm doing some offerings to Hecate, which we'll also go over. So an, an, a cauldron here to represent her as well. And then when I was preparing to make my altar for Hecate, she told me to include my Book of Shadows on the altar to her. She said that she would protect my Book of Shadows and really infuse it with her magic and protection. So I didn't have room to put it up here, but you definitely want to have your Book of Shadows somewhere near your Hecate altar and ask her to honor it and protect it and infuse her magic and witchcraft into it. And then as a divination tool specifically for Hecate, I have created a bag of her different symbols. So it's gonna be like a take on throwing the bones. So I have different crystals and symbols for her here. I have a piece of, another piece of black tourmaline in here. I have one of the snakes. I have this quartz crystal that reminds me of the moon to represent the moon. I have three different keys in here as well. Of course, I had to have her sigil in there. And then this Swarovski crystal skull, as well as another little broom. So you're going to create your own little bag of symbols and you're going to create a relationship with them. You're going to make a connection and relationship to each item in the bag and then carry them with you so that you really make a deep connection with them. And you're going to ask Hecate to bless and cleanse and protect each one of these and really invoke her energy into each symbol and item that is in your throwing the bones Hecate bag. And then you're going to dedicate this bag of Hecate symbols to her, preferably on a dark moon. You could also alternatively uh, devote a specific tarot or oracle card deck specifically to her and communicating with her. So before doing any kind of divination or connection with her, just a suggestion, it's really good to first make contact with your womb space or if you're male identifying with your Hara space. So you're gonna really want to get in connection with that whole pelvic floor region before you do any kind of divination with her. So really feeling that area of your body and what that's holding because it's really gonna help create a better connection and communication with Hecate. So offerings for Hecate are going to be to burn some rosemary and dragon's blood mixed. So whenever I work with her, she always asks me to mix these together and burn them and offering to her. I'm gonna burn some of this right now. So you'd wanna start by burning some incense for her, lighting some candles. And then I also have an offering of lavender here in a jar. So this is an offering for her and I'm going to ask her to really imbue her energy into this lavender and then I can use it for my magical works when I need lavender for a specific spell and it's going to carry Hecate's energy. And then I have a jar of bay leaves here. She loves bay leaves as well because they're very protective. So I have those as an offering. Again, I'm gonna ask her to infuse her energy into those so that when I use them for my magical works, Hecate is really charging up my magic. And then I also have a jar of honey with some 
cloves of garlic in here that are soaking in that. She loves honey and she loves garlic. So I have those as well. And I've also set up an egg. So this is my egg is an offering to her. It symbolizes her, but it's also an offering to her because she really loves eggs as well since they are associated with the womb and that menstrual cycle. So those are some suggestions of offerings that you could give to Hecate. You don't have to do all of those, just, just whatever is calling to you. Maybe she comes up with something else for you that she wants you to offer her, like the dragon's blood and rosemary is what she specifically told me she wanted me to offer her. So you just ask her, make a connection with her. This whole altar is all about communicating with her, making a connection with her, getting to know her energy and seeing what she wants, how she can assist you and then how you can give her gratitude in return. For more witchy content like this, check out our blog and other magical links in the description below. And remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more witchy content like this. It was such a blessing to be able to take you through how to honor Hecate today. Thank you so much for joining me and learning more about this beautiful, wonderful pagan goddess. Hail Hecate and blessed be.